Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. So until about, I don't know, five, six minutes ago, this is a video I didn't necessarily know that I was going to make. I mean, you can kind of tell this is not the normal spot where I film videos. So uh, this is this is my bench where I store EDC stuff and where I watch TV. I don't ever sit here is what I'm trying to say, but I, I thought to myself, how can I instantly improve my EDC? I thought this about four months ago and I went through this like regimen of selling gear. I felt I was giving away gear, selling gear. I felt really gluttonous and about uh, in the amount of EDC gear that I had. So I kind of just went on this spree when I kind of just started getting rid of stuff and all of that good stuff. And I realized that I have gotten rid of a lot of stuff, but there's still more that could be done. Am I going to do more? I'm not quite sure. But the purpose of this video is to, to help you out if you're getting started in EDC or if you're trying to like mend, mold, maybe bring back or dial back your EDC stun. EDC stands for everyday carry. Let's just talk about bacon, bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes as if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to either start an EDC, reduce your EDC, grow it, whatever you wanna do. But before we jump into that, I, I pulled out my drawer. This is kind of where I store gear. This is this is my EDC drawer, my, my Husky. I think this is a 52 inch workbench. I have a 72 inch, this might be the 62 inch workbench. Mostly full of everyday carry, survival prep, boomstick stuff. Um, for my rails, YouTube stuff, no real tools are in here. And then on my other workbench is full of tools. And I started going through it and realizing that I'm proud of the progress, but there's still more that can be done. Just looking at my notes, I have 50 folding knives, 50. I actually have more than that, but that's 50 that are in this drawer. I got a bunch that some companies have sent me and I don't know if I'm gonna count those in these because I'm probably gonna give those away or or sell them. Plus I'm saying 50 is, that's the ones I counted here and then there's one on my hip. So it's kind of like, you know. Have I really reduced as much as I think I have or as much as I want to? But what else do we have here? I also have 23 multi-tools. Multi-tools in the very back of this drawer back here. Gerber, Leatherman, Victorinox, no name brands. That's pretty much a healthy division of those, those actually make up everything. Gerber, Victorinox, and Leatherman are, are my, my main ones. Then I got four utility knives. Utility knives are kind of like the knives that are, have replaceable blades of any type. So Gerber Pry Bread X, Milwaukee Fastbacks, stuff like that. Regular utility blades. Then I have six pry bars, which I feel a little idiotic about because I shit on pry bars, but I never carry these. These are probably next on the chopping list for going bye-bye. Every single pry bar that I own, every single one. Wait, let me think. Yeah, every single one was given to me by a company. It's probably why I have them, whether it's O Pry, which is O by O Light sister company, Daily Carry Co, Roby Vaughn, Botsteed, you know, they've been sent out to me. Then there's 22 EDC pins. I got pins here on my actual desk. There is pins in my secondary drawer, which is where I keep flashlights and pins and 22 EDC pins. When I say EDC pin, I'm not talking about like a big, I'm talking about roller, ball joint, gel, just, and this also includes mechanical pencils or like the wing back pencils, which I like to use every now and again. 22, I have 10 wallets, which is kind of crazy in and of itself. We're rocking with 10 wallets. Every single one, except for like, I think one or two were sent to me. And I have 34 flashlights. 
probably more. This is just what I counted here. There's one on this workbench. There's a couple over there. So there's, let's call it 40. Eight watches, analog and digital. Not even car counting my smart watch. So I guess that would be nine and I got a pocket watch. And then in rotation, I currently have seven EDC bags. Whether, you know, that's for Vertex or Go Ruck, which you haven't seen those videos yet. Waterfell, Nutsack, Brevet, Inatech. You know, so I'm, I, I felt proud of myself, and, but I started running through these numbers. And I guess that brings me to my first point, which is know your why. Why are you doing everyday carry? Why are you expanding it? Why are you already in it? And what made you choose the term EDC? Because up until this point, before you watch this video, regardless if you knew it or not, you had an everyday carry. You had keys, you had a wallet, cash, you were maybe always wore a watch. Maybe you didn't have a pocket knife before. Maybe you didn't have a flashlight. Maybe you didn't always care about the wallet that you carried. But for some reason, you targeted the word EDC. Why the hell are you doing it? Are you in dad mode? Do you want to have some stuff that looks nice for the gram? Are you trying to become a collector? Do you just want better gear? What does better mean to you? Because I know what better means to me. It may not mean the same thing to you. And is it just as simple as you want a dedicated knife? You're tired of carrying a utility knife for tasks. It gets all gunked up. You don't want to have to buy blades. You'd rather sharpen it, learn how to do stuff first. I guess that's the first point. It's just know your why. Why the hell are you doing it? Why did you, why are you even getting into it? Why are you entertaining the term everyday carry EDC? My next point, whether it's expanding, reducing, or getting into it, start practical. Okay. Even if you're already in EDC, you're trying to rev up. You want to collect more stuff. You want to have more of a certain type of item. Be practical about it. If you're not into it at all, be practical about it. And if you're trying to reduce it like I am, even I have to be practical about it. Like I, I have to think about what am I gonna sell versus give away? How much of a task is that to do? Whether I'm posting or my social medias or I am trying to post on other type of scenario uh, uh, avenues as well. It can be a whole headache doing that type of stuff. So practical can mean small if you're starting off for the first time. Practical can mean frugal with your dough if that's something that you care about. And also it can mean limiting yourself. So here's a tip. If you're not into EDC at all, limit yourself for any specific item, whether it's a flashlight, a notebook, a wallet, whatever, a knife, to two hours of your pay. If your salary, take your salary, divide that by 2,000. That's about 2,000 workable hours in a year. That's about how much you make hourly. And if you're hourly, you already know how much you make hourly. Try not to spend more than two hours of your pay on a specific item. That way, if you hate it, well, you wasted about two hours of your life. If you love it, you know that you may be willing to spend more. So a good starting point, if you make $25 an hour, maybe you spend no more than $50 on a flashlight. Individually, you spend no more than $50 on a pocket knife, a wallet, et cetera, et cetera. That's a good way to start practical. If you're trying to expand that up, you already got the crap, maybe you multiply that and you spend more, no more than four hours of your pay, okay? You really wanna go from G10 and micarta to titanium. I'm not saying that's an upgrade, but it might be for you. Well, four hours of your pay might get you a nice titanium knife. But my third point is know your end game. What the heck is your end game? Is it a grail knife? Is it a grail item? I realized as I go through this drawer, I own a shit ton of Benchmade. I haven't counted them up, but I probably easily own 20 Benchmade pocket knives in this drawer. There's probably some more and some pouches. But obviously that wasn't grill for me because I keep buying them. Is your grill item a specific maker, a specific knife, a specific type, maybe a, even a type of scales, materials? Maybe you want carbon fiber, marble carbon fiber. You want CNC machine, G10. You want micarta. Maybe you want stainless steel. I don't know. But what's, what, what is your end game? I realized also going through this that most of my knives are G10 in my cart. It seems like grandpa gets excited over some nice CNC machine G10 knives. That was actually my favorite type of knife is a nice CNC machine G10 knife. And 
believe it or not, going through this entire thing, I own one titanium knife. I used to have several. I am literally down to one. And this one would be gone, but for I wanna have a titanium knife to compare and contrast whenever I'm talking about titanium knives. Knowing your end game could be a finite amount of time, meaning you're into EDC, you just wanna get a nice, good pocket knife, something that you can sharpen, everything that I kinda mentioned, that's your end game having everything that could be your end game your end game could be having that grail type of item that can be your end game your end game could be a specific number of items i want 50 knives whatever know your end game it could be ongoing you could say i don't have an end game i'm gonna do this until i freaking have six feet in the dirt whatever next think about your resources do you already own gear that you seek do you already own multi-tools? You're about to go around and buy some multi-tools. You already own knives. You didn't even know it. Did you get some free in some type of box that maybe you're a part of some monthly box like bespoke or some type of like box that send you stuff? You already have the gear. Know your resources. Are you going to be an Amazon bull? Are you going to be a brick and mortar bull? Are you going to be the type of person that's going to be buying the stuff on Amazon, on Blade HQ, going into a brick and mortar? Do you need to physically feel those things? That's a resource. Because if you're gonna be Amazon, you might not be able to find Benchmade or Spyderco, or you can find it and they could be fakes. Like I got Benchmade fakes from Amazon. So that's something else to think about as well. Do you have buddies that already have gear that they wanna get rid of? I just got rid of a whole lot of woodworking gear and that gear was given to friends that I know could use it. I sold a table saw, but I gave away miter gauges, the drill press I sold, it's just to make more room for a lot of stuff that I do for my man cave and for YouTube, we're taking precedence over woodworking. But the example would be, if I were to all of a sudden abandon EDC, maybe I would have a buddy I would give stuff to. I made a buddy a survival bag for a get home. So know your resources in regards to that as well. But the biggest one, as I go through and I tell you about all these freaking knives that I have, and everything that I have in here and reducing myself down and feeling pretty proud about that is don't get butt hurt. What I mean by that is try not to be envious. There's a difference between being jealous and being envious, okay? I find myself having natural jealousy. It's a good, healthy thing, okay? As much as I tell y'all about Danny Lene, Mrs. X, I still have a healthy amount of jealousy. I don't want a guy walking up and slapping her on the ass, right? But at the same time, I think that jealousy is quite different from being envious. Envious is when you're almost wishing harm or wishing hate on someone. Like, I hate that X has 50 knives. He's a freaking dirt bag. I mean, you can be an envious person, you know, whatever, comment down below. Or you can just be jealous or meaning that you may strive to have those things one day, but that doesn't mean that you're envious. You just look, it almost is teetering towards jealousy slash admiration. They can be the same thing. But if you go too far, you get towards envy and you get towards being butthurt. So I would just caution you that whatever you do, as I go through and I reduce these things, I have a go because I'm starting, when I say starting off an EDC, where I am in my EDC journals, journey, I am trying to reduce. I'm at 50 knives. By the end of 2023, I would love to be down to 30. Sounds easy x get rid of 20 knives yeah i got companies sending me crap i got a freaking eye to buy new knives for multi-tools i would be love love to be down to five i mean i own 23 some of these are duplicates like why do i own two leatherman free t4s i don't other than the fact that they're different colors why do i own both why do i need a leatherman free p4 as well as a Leatherman Curl. Like the P4 almost does everything except for the Curl, except it, it can't use bits. So I probably can get rid of that. I know for a fact I can get rid of my, my Leatherman Wingman. I don't, I don't like this Leatherman. So I have to think about that type of stuff as well. But what are your tips for getting started in the EDC? I call this, you know, what I'll probably end up doing soon is a process called Kamari when I'm gonna go through this entire cabinet. I'm gonna to touch every single item in one weekend. And if that item no longer brings me joy, I'm gonna set it to the side to get rid of it. If it still brings me joy, it will stay. But I'll do that in the spring. It'd be my little Kamari process. 
What would you do to reduce, get started, or expand your EDC? Comment down below. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, well, thank you once again for stopping by watching me run my grape. I'm not gonna do a whole tour of this because it'd be kind of boring. Maybe I will. Comment down below if you want to see a tour. Everyone else, we'll speak soon.